It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back. It is your feel good breakfast show. It's Expresso on S3. And yesterday is Monday, but not any Monday. It's a mental health Monday. And today we are talking about self talk. The way you talk to yourself has profound implications for modern mental wellness, especially in today's digital age. Now we have Joy Desfountain, co founder of So Serene, a digital well being platform focused on supporting mental health. And we also have Maya Ritstein, product architect for So Serene, joining us to offer some insight on how we can get better at self-talk. Ladies, great to have you here. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm interested to know what self-talk was going on in your heads on the way into studio <laughs> this morning. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> we'll soon know whether it was the right or wrong self-talk. <laughs> we, we tease ourselves. There's a stretch of highway as you come in here, just before you, and, and we all have to get to a point of, for me, it's gratitude is generally what yeah. I use, but it matters. Yeah. So, how, how often do we talk to ourselves in a day? I've heard ridiculous numbers, like a thousand times. Give us a, a, an indication of how much we are speaking to ourselves and how much of that, by the average, is negative. Mm -hmm. So we are speaking to ourselves consistently from the time we wake up to the time we go to bed at night. And often, it's depend, it's going the constantly. And depending on where we are in our life, whether you are kind of a youngster, whether you are newly married, whether you've got kids, my child today is writing science. And Thanks I, for looking at me when you said whether you're a youngster. That was just, <laughs> whether you're my self-talk just went. <laughs> 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 but I mean, from a young age, you talk, you, you've got this thing of your, your mind telling you different things. And, and I know my, my young one who's writing science this morning, I mean, that's, that has been going through his head the whole night. So when I woke up before I left here this morning at five o'clock, he's like, Mom, I don't even feel like I've slept. And I was like, okay, but what are we gonna say? We're gonna tell yourself, you know your work, you are calm, you are compassionate, you are kind, you are competent. I love you that. You know that what you are going, you, you know everything that is going to be asked to you. And even if there are some things that aren't asked to you, that's okay as well. You got this, um, yeah. And so we kind of, yeah, hundreds of times a day, we are answering questions, we are telling ourselves things um, more often than not, and we are being impacted by things around us as well. Sure. Let's talk a bit about social media, let's talk about what TV, what radio, what our parents are telling us, um, knowingly and sometimes unknowingly as well. What's your son's name? Connor. Good luck, boy. If you, you got this, Connor, you, Connor, you got this, son. Five, Come on, sex. kids. There yeah, I love that. <laughs> Out of all these thoughts and all these moments we have, how important is it to shut it out or should we listen to it? When should we listen to it? I think it's always important to listen to ourselves, but to be able to find the balance of knowing when it's very negative and when we should not, not shut it out, but engage with it. Ask ourselves, why are we speaking to ourselves like that? For What's sure. the reason? And when it's, you know, and get it to a positive place or realistic more than positive because the, i'm glad you used that word realistic because life isn't always roses yeah. it can be very challenging and you need to be prepared for that but if and i've heard ridiculous numbers up to 90 percent of that self-talk out of the thousands of things that you are saying to yourself up to 90 percent can be negative exactly. and i know that depends on the kind of person you mentioned social media. We might think that even being slightly more advanced in life, <laughs> um, that you're immune to that or you can shut it out, but you can't, can't. it's always there. How do we then kind of adjust that gauge? Because we need to engage with social media, we need to be mm. connected to the world. Yeah. This is how the world engages, but it is so polarized, so negative, and presenting an unrealistic version of the world. So how do we That's it. how do we balance that, or how do we get that right? Yeah. So number one, awareness, mm. an awareness and an ag ag acknowledgement mm. that our very real, very up and down life of 24, 24 hours a day, we are comparing to someone's 30 second curated, more often for than sure. not, highlight of their day. AI driven. <laughs> of yeah, now, sure. specifically, yeah, exactly. filtered, p perfect. And even though there's an acknowledgement often from those that are posting that, that this is just the highlight of their day. When you, have, when you are lying in bed at night and you have had one long day mm -hmm. with many challenges it's hard to look at that and say oh my goodness but just, that just looks so amazing <laughs> so so a start starting point is just an acknowledgement and awareness that you cannot do that um, and when you are doing it it's equally okay to feel a little bit like that but then understanding that perhaps it's a good place to start putting a few guard 
guardrails. Yeah, I, I love so, that. Make it practical. Yeah. So there's something called digital mindfulness, which would be limiting our consumption of social media or our usage, being selective with the material we consume. Because you can curate it. Yeah, hundred percent. Of course. And engaging in inspiring or uplifting content to create a healthier digital environment for ourselves. I love it. See, that is necessary because I think a lot of people don't do that. Mm. We, 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 we tend to focus on the negative self-talk. But I personally, and this is maybe more of a selfish question, is I find positive self-talk sometimes difficult. Mm. How can we honestly <laughs> have the positive self-talks with ourselves? No, actually, it's so funny. Something that works for me, and it's so simple, and everyone says it, but even just looking in the mirror and saying to yourself, like, it's fine, like, you can do it. Like, yeah. you really just can, and even channeling someone who you know can, something as simple as that really works. Okay. Personally, so I think there's two things in that, Zoe. Number one, acknowledging it can't be 24-7 happiness. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? As an example, I tore my calf just over a week ago and I had a whole bunch of physios around me when it happened and they were like, no anti-inflammatories for the first 48 hours. And I was like, interesting, why? And they said, because you've got to allow your body to go into its natural yeah, healing it's mode. Thing, yeah. okay. um, and so I was like, oh, that's interesting, number one, for the calf, but number two, actually for feelings as well. So an acknowledgement that your body is capable of amazing things, in the healing, outer healing, and everything in between. For sure. But you've got to give it you've got to give it the space to be able to do that. I podcast, those who know me well know that like I'm very, I, I rely a lot on external resources. One of the reasons we actually started So Serene is being able to actually start taking those resources into a safe space for people to be able to learn from. Podcast, I listen to, I, I, um, I have newsletters, something called The New Happy. I don't know if you've ever come across it. If you haven't, you really should. Go the and go and the new yeah. happy. Right. It is amazing on social media. Um, it's American, I think, um, as well as newsletters. And it's just they have an amazing way of putting down, making complicated feelings very straightforward. Oh. Last week, as an example, um, there was a visual with a lot of different color balls all together, okay, all overlapping, etc. And at the bottom of that were beautiful balls in a straight line, all different colors. And it said that the top said sometimes it has to feel like this for it to get to this. Like this. And it's just those sometimes to acknowledge where you are and then to say, but it's okay because I'm on a journey to start feeling like this. But you can't get here without feeling here. And that's not just, that's not binary. It's not one equals mm. this. No. It's, you're gonna be doing that many times a day, many times process. a week, yeah, many times a year. I can hear your A-type personality kicking in with all the fuzzy balls in and out of, out of order. We are going <laughs> to get too. them in a beautiful straight line, guys. It's all right. We will get those thoughts ordered because what you think, what you say to yourself really does matter. The beautiful thing, there is a community of people ready to give you the right kind of language, the words to use, as Ryle well says, the spells to cast on yourself. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Welcome back. It is your Feel Good Breakfast Show and you're just in time because we've been discussing the profound impact self-talk has on our mental well-being, especially in light of our exposure to social media. Now, next we'll be talking about what your inner dialogue says about our EQ. And we have Joy and Maya back with us today to, to continue this conversation. Um, because it's a vital one. It's a conversation that's running in our head regardless of how we treat or equip ourselves to be able to deal with it. When we talk about EQ or emotional intelligence, I'm so glad that this has gained extra relevance now, but it's still kind of sits on the back seat in terms of it being a practical tool for flourishing within life. Yet so many of the softer skills that we rely on now are vital. We need this EQ. How does how we talk to ourselves inspire or, or kind of feed into that notion of our emotional intelligence? And what does that mean when we hit the tough times? So Why is it so important? When we hit a difficult time, our self-talk will either hold us back or push us forward. And in these moments, someone with maybe a higher EQ will look at the situation and think, hmm, this is tough, but what can I learn from it? And so it's a difference of perspective. And action. Correct. Yes. And I think equally, an underpinning of resilience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we want, we, we want to be resilient. We want to, again, going back to what we said earlier, acknowledge it's not all going to be easy, 
but in acknowledging that you can do hard things as well, you're like, okay, that's the first that's the first step to this. Yeah. An acknowledgement that hard is okay, and then being able to move through that hard. Because once you've moved through there, then you're high fiving because you're like, now I am that much more resilient, and that's important. Well, you've drawn a new line in the sand and because every time, it, yeah, and sense. you can go back and say, well, I've survived that before, so chances are I'll make it through this. Yeah, you get that's that. That's it. Yeah. So, I I would love to know. There was obviously a gap for this, and that's where So Serene comes in. Mm -hmm. If I log on to So Serene, what, what can I expect? Great question. <laughs> so we founded So Serene. There's, there's a number of us um, who, who, who built the business, and it came as a result of understanding that well-being isn't just being fit. Well-being isn't just what you put in your body. Well-being isn't just... Um, kind of mental tenacity and personal development. It really is a combination of all of it. And, and equally in bite-sized chunks. So, so not being able to transform your life overnight, no. yeah. but understanding that the world that we live in is tough on all levels, but how can we provide tools to be able to make today that much better than yesterday? For sure. And so you go onto SoSerene.com, you actually enter into something called a serenity quiz. It's no, there's no right or wrong answers. What it is is just a state of your serenity at any stage so that we can personalize a journey for you. And that journey is across three different pillars. It is across move, it is across what you nourish your body with, but then it's about the calm element. And that calm is really that personal development, that, that mental side of things. So we provide a journaling functionality, totally anonymous, um, i.e. if you lose your password, we cannot even reset it for you. <laughs> that is how anonymous and how personal to you it is. Um, to mindfulness meditations, to we starting to bring on coaches as well. So really to be able to tailor your journey based on where you are and understanding where you are now and where you might be in two months time is vastly different so being able to kind of keep changing it based on what your needs are with the goal of kind of improving one's well-being understanding it is a journey and understanding it's those those bite-sized chunks to mm. to improve every single day or help you at least um, yeah and, and sometimes it's just one step sometimes I mean we say this often often the bravest thing you can do is just getting out of bed That's in it. the morning because it's that first step it's that kind of tipping of the scale as we speak, I'm so often hit by this notion, sadly, that we're preaching to the choir. The language that we are using is going to resonate with people who have already started this journey. So maybe looking at this through a slightly different lens, as you have said, with the difference that this small step, just a shift can make, what change have you seen in the people who have connected to your community? And you can both jump on this because you get to connect with people on the deep, as much as you can't read their journals, you are still connecting <laughs> on a very deep, vulnerable, personal level, and you get to see then the rewards. What change do you see in the people who plug into So Serene? Yeah, so, I mean, we've recently launched um, with a new corporate, actually, last week. And what we do on top of that is where we're running challenges within corporates, we actually create community WhatsApp groups, etc. Oh, sure. obviously all um, with their approval to join, etc. And that is, so number one step there is empowering them to be vulnerable. Emp number one, empowering the business to say, it's okay to not always be okay. And if you expect your staff to be okay all the time, you're gonna have a massive it's be disconnect. A failure. Yeah, for sure. You're gonna have a problem on your hands. <laughs> so then to say, all right, so if the, if the business has taken the first step, then how do we start engaging with staff? Now, you're dealing with females, you're dealing with males. Often females are perhaps more okay to be more vulnerable. Males are sometimes more cagey. Equally, specifically in work environments, they're like, oh, but I've got to be able to have this face and put on a show, etc." Sure, a version of uh, myself. A hundred percent, a version of myself. So we do a lot of work within the business first to be able to say, number one, this is your journey. It can be as anonymous as you want it to be, but understand the power of community. Mm. And if we're able to be able to be just that little bit vulnerable with each other, um, believe me, it's, there's going to be a huge beauty in that. And so to be able to see, as and again, not everyone that fl that switch is not flicked on today for everyone. For sure. yeah. But to be able to start seeing people take that step to being slightly more vulnerable. And it doesn't have to be, guys, I'm absolutely not coping. I think I want to run away. But it can actually just be, today was a hard day, and that's okay. And this is what I did to try and improve yeah. it. And Why all of a sudden- Why do you think we went through this? Correct. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you've got people that saying, but actually today was a hard day for me as well. And that's amazing. Thank you for being as vulnerable as you were. And so it takes, it, it, it creates an environment of trust perhaps where there wasn't that beforehand and we're starting to 
see that with a number of our clients now. It's a journey to get there, it but once they're there, it's kind of like as you're on the peak of that waterfall and you can see it going, yeah. and that's really beautiful. Well, it's momentum. So even the vulnerability is an action. It's something you're giving to someone else yeah. to prompt action in that space. So even when you think there is absolutely nothing you can do, just by engaging with that thought, is an action that can start a very positive... There we go, the goosebumps have come. <laughs> uh, but that's a massive, massive thing. Thank you so much. I'm so glad you are doing what you are doing in your Thank respective you. spaces. Thank you so, so much. What you've created is beautiful. It definitely Thank is. You if us. you want to go and experience more, go visit soserene.com. And, of course, they have all the tools you need to make sure you start your day off positive.